I praise you, God, that I am fearfully, wonderfully made. I praise you, God, that I am fearfully, wonderfully made. That's a little excerpt of a song by Danielle Rose, and um, it just kind of perfectly encapsulates what we're talking about today, which is mm. St. Clair of Assisi, and really her whole mirror image of looking into the mirror every day and seeing the face of God and taking delight in that, and that you yeah. are reflecting him to the world, mm. that you are fearfully, wonderfully, purposefully made. Kind of reminds me of a quote by actually St. Benedict, or Pope Benedict, who said, um, each of us is the direct result of a thought of God. Each of us is willed. Each of us is loved. Each of us is necessary. Um, and like we said, we celebrate her feast day this yeah. week. So yeah, Mom, August, give us a little bit of background well, August on 11th is the feast day of, of St. Clair. And that's actually my sister Mary's birthday. So that's an easy way for me to remember. But St. Clair of Assisi was an Italian saint, uh, I think born around 11... 94, I want to say, uh, somewhere. So a long time ago. Yeah. And she was one of the first followers of Francis of Assisi, as you mm -hmm. already pointed out, and, and was, and actually founded her, uh, an order herself that was kind of based off of the order of Francis. And it was entitled, uh, order of poor ladies. So oftentimes you'll hear Francis refer or Claire referred to as poor Claire. And that's where that came from because they were women who came together, they gave up everything. I mean, remember the story of how Frances, when she came to be um, a part of his uh, founding, she he cut her hair. He yeah. cut her hair off yeah. and put her in some very humble garb that she wore for the rest of her life. And so there was none of this association with with earthly things and beauty, you know, that the symbolization of the cutting off of the hair and the, she came from a relatively uh, wealthy and well-to-do family, as did Francis. And both of them gave all of that up to follow Christ. They, you know, mm -hmm. they, they were really so, so devout. Um, so Claire is the patron saint of television and computer screens. And boy, do we need her in a, yeah, yeah. I know. good job, Claire. <laughs> yes. That's a good thing to be a patron saint of because almost everybody has a television or a computer screen in their home and most people use them daily. So talk about a, a, a saint who we should be um, communicating with and asking her to intercede to the Lord on our behalf. It is certainly Saint Clair. So she she defended uh, she defended the faith. She defended the the monastery, the idea of, of living in a monastery, and she did so by the power of the Holy Eucharist. That was it's extremely important to Clair. She was considered to be one of the great Catholic mystics of the faith, and it's not hard to understand why when you read about her life. One of the things that I was always fascinated with with Clair was that. Of course, her family was not real happy that she took off and um, disappeared. And they knew where she was and they knew where to go to find her. And they did find her. They sent an uncle after her, actually. And when the uncle went to retrieve her, um, she clung to the altar and they could not physically remove her. They physically, so it was a power not her own, obviously, because these are grown men strong and it wasn't just the uncle, but his entourage. And they physically could not remove her and they were so angry and so upset. And several years later, her sister, I think her sister's name was Catherine, her sister came uh, also to be at the monastery. Oh. And when they came, and the same thing happened and they came to get her and, uh, and and St. Clair, well, she wasn't saying at the time, but Claire started praying and praying profusely for her sister. And when she did that, her, her sister, Catherine, became so heavy that they physically could not, they physically could not budge her. No. So, you know, these are the kinds of things that, that God allows to happen when we are truly 100% in his will, following him. And, and St. Clair was, yes. And we hope that you will also mm -hmm. follow St. Clair and St. Francis' example by being fully in the will of God, because that's where God wants all of us to be. Absolutely. So, and actually, anyhow. speaking of Chandler, it's been so interesting. I've just been noticing lately, and, and not even lately, for a while, yeah. you know, like babies yeah. love to look at their reflection in the mirror. And he just gets so excited and he takes such delight in himself. And 
And that's just such a beautiful thing that we have lost as adults. You know, I think right. that that is God speaking to us to say, you know, you know, if you've ever heard Christ has no body now, but yours, no right. hands, no feet, you know, like this, we are Christ right. to the world. Right. Yeah. And so when you look in the mirror, you should take delight. That is looking at the image of God. And that's something that Claire was really passionate about. And she told all her followers to look into the mirror every day and see the image of God. And so that's been a little lesson we've been taking from Chandler is that yeah. he's looking into the mirror every day and delighting in the fact that he is the image of God. And we need to be doing the same because we have... um we have so much to be grateful for and so much work that God wants us to do. And um, and so instead of looking in the mirror and saying, I look haggard or look at those dark circles, you know, it's taking delight in that the fact that God created you, you're here, and that he has beautiful work for you to be doing. So place your mind in the mirror of eternity. Those are actually the words of St. Clair. And today, uh, the week here we are, the week of the, uh, the feast day of St. Clair. Claire of Assisi, we want to remind all of you out there to emulate this beautiful saint, this beautiful Catholic mystic mm -hmm. who said, so place your mind in the mirror of eternity. Mm -hmm. And may you have a very blessed week. Right, Kristen? Absolutely. And one other thing. You. If you happen to get to the St. Francis Spirituality oh, yeah. Center in Tiffin, mm -hmm. we were blessed to do a retreat there. Yeah. Um, if you walk the grounds, there is a statue of St. Clair holding a mirror. And it is the whole yeah. mirror of eternity. Right. The look into the mirror every day and see the image of God. Mm -hmm. So if you happen to be in the Tiffin area, absolutely go check that out. It's so beautiful. And if you're feeling so inspired... Look up the quotes of St. Clair because oh, she so has many good ones. so many. She wrote beautiful letters to people. And um, there was actually, um, oh, I want to say her name was Agnes. I remember reading about uh, a, a gal who was, uh, again, a very wealthy gal. She, she was like a princess. And and she also would gravitated to the sisters of the, of the poor ladies and kind of started her own thing. But Claire, Claire would write letters to this woman and encourage her to stay the course and finish the race and keep the faith and to, and to um, not get bogged down with worldly treasure, but to store up your treasures in Christ. And so, you know, whether it's via writing someone a letter, making a phone call, uh, sending a text, praying for somebody who might not even know you're praying for them. There are so many ways that we can change the course of eternity for another human being. Mm -hmm. And we are all called as brothers and sisters in Christ, as sons and daughters of, of the Lord to be doing these things and be, to be doing them regularly. So. And, you know, we often say if someone is on your mind, you know, yeah. just just this week, mm -hmm. um, someone ran into my husband, then she was on my mind. So I sent her a message just, just thanking her for all the great things that she's doing in our community. And, you know, the thing is, like, when someone comes to your mind, act on that. You know, don't just think it. You know, if right. you've got a compliment for someone or you just want to share something with them, you know, God speaks to us often through our thoughts. Yeah. So if you know that that's going to bear good fruit, don't be afraid. Share that because that helps us all to know that we are God's people and that we are his image and we need to keep reflecting that to the world. Amen. So we pray that you look into the mirror today and you say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made and God has great work for me to be doing. Amen.